Hi, it's Jeff from Home Renovision DIY, and today we are going to be covering the really intricate world of prepping your floor. It doesn't sound very sexy, I know, but don't install any of your luxury vinyl plank or laminate flooring until you've seen this video and you know how to prep things up. That'll ensure that you get the performance you're looking for without all those crazy sounds. Well, let's get into this. Laminate and vinyl flooring have one thing in common. They're what's called a floating floor. So you're not attaching that flooring to anything. So when that kind of situation comes around, you've got to prep your floor different than if you're attaching it, like doing a tile where you're cementing it in place or using hardwood where you're nailing it all in place. The preparation for floating floors is crucial because A, it has to be super clean, but secondly, your substrate has to be incredibly strong because all of the strength of the floor is in the substrate, not in any of the material going on top. Now, most people today, the reason they're putting in a floating floor is they're ripping out carpet or they're ripping out a laminate and they're putting it in a new floating floor. A lot of folks are upgrading to vinyl. And if your house is like mine, it's not exactly level. So we're gonna show you today how to put floor leveler in, how to screw down your subfloor. So whether you have a wood floor or you're on cement, there's gonna be great tips and tricks in this video. Tip number one is screw down your floor if you have OSB. Most homes, unless you're a relatively new build, and you'll know as soon as you look at it, you'll see the nails in the floor. If you have nails, you've gotta throw a screw next to every nail to tighten your floor down, okay? Every one of these joints will, fl will have uh, deflection. And what I mean by that is there's a floor joist here, there'll be a floor joist 16 inches over, and every time you step in between them, your weight is gonna cause that wood to lift where the nails are. And when the wood lifts, it's gonna cause the wood to go up and down over the shaft of the nail, and it's gonna cause squeaking. So, to avoid problems of squeaking floors, always screw them down first. If you're lucky enough to be in a new build, you'll notice that you have screws and not nails. They, that means they've screwed and glued the subfloor. So you don't have to worry about that step of the preparation. If you're on concrete or you have a slab on grade home, then you obviously don't have to worry about that. The next step for preparing your floor, of course, is floor leveler if you need it. Now, if you're on a slab, in a lot of cases, you're gonna have uneven concrete pour. Well, these guys come in, they make a frame, they pour the concrete, but then when they're finishing, they're bringing in equipment that causes it to be pushed around and you get a bit of a bowl effect. It's the same if you're in a basement. The concrete actually has lower spots and higher spots in the room. And so in most cases, floating floors can adapt to those subtle changes and it's not necessary to use a floor leveler, but in my case, it's an older home and the middle of the house actually collapsed a little bit. So we're raising it all back up. And the way we did it is we actually took layers of plywood and screwed it down to build up until it was almost level. And then we primed it and add the floor leveler. We also installed some two by twos around the perimeter of the room to contain the area that we're leveling. And this gives us a lot more control. On this type of floor, it's tongue and groove. And the particular manufacturer, every 16 inches, there's actually a hole, the tongue is missing. So when you put the floor together, you end up with these problems where the leveler will actually go down that hole, okay? And so what you wanna do here is just stuff in some paper, all right? And then cut it flush. Right there, okay? Now you're set up, you can use the primer and you can pour floor leveler and you're not gonna have cement working its way underneath the floor. There we go. In some cases, that is all it takes. All the cement for the pour will end up going through that hole because it's self-leveling and it'll end up in the ceiling cavity or maybe in the basement on your furniture downstairs. <laughs> A lesson learned that one the hard way. All right, before you pour your floor leveler and install your flooring, especially if you've had a carpet, you're gonna wanna do an inspection on the surface for things like carpet staples, right? You can do that with a hammer. Put your hammer on the side and you can just run it back and forth. And you're gonna hear that. You're gonna feel the ridge. You can take your pair of trusty pliers, grab your staples, get them out of the way. And make sure your floor is solid and sound and you don't have any fasteners sticking up out of it. When all of that is said and done, you're ready to go. Now, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to do a good sweep of the room. And if you have a vacuum attachment that you can actually vacuum every square inch, 
it's worth investing in the time to do that. Now, with floor leveler, it's not necessary to actually uh, get on your hands and knees and wash it. I know when we're doing tile work, we always want to wash our plywood, but for floor leveler, you don't need to do that. The difference being is this right here. This primer is going to take care of making sure that this floor is ready to uh, take on the cement. It's a special compound. They bond well together. It, the primer goes right into the contour, contours of the wood. So I'm using a product I just went down to the local Home Depot and picked up because generally speaking, uh, floor leveler is floor leveler. There's not a whole lot of options out there. If you're using leveler for the hardwood flooring purposes and you need to have your staples go into that leveler as well, then definitely go to a supplier for floor products. They all have different products designed specifically to receive staples as well. This stuff, you just pour out, okay? And you use a little roller. Now, all you have to do is get the area that you want to pour your leveler damp, okay? And you can manipulate this stuff just fine. You don't have to put in a whole lot of it to get it to do this job. You just need the surface damp. And we're basically just going to paint the flooring in and around the area where we're expecting it to flow, okay? Now what this does, this primer does two things. Make sure that there's, the floor has got a good bond to this concrete, but more importantly, it'll keep your leveler from cracking so that when you're walking around, you aren't gonna get crunchy bits underneath your feet. Now, my dip in my floor is right around here. The center of it is over towards the stairs, so I'm expecting to get a fair amount of leveler here, which is good because I'm doing a nine foot island and I'm getting appliances put here. So it'd be nice if this floor was all level. It'll make the installation of those appliances a lot easier. So I'm really making sure that I'm covering the area that I'm expecting it to go. Now, leveler itself can only be applied and I would say quarter to half inch maximum in one pour. So if you're gonna go more than that, you can always put down wood first. Uh, generally speaking, like what we're going to do is we're going to pour it here, but I know it's going to overlap. Existing primer, I'm sorry, existing leveler does not need to be primed in between coats. It bonds to itself just fine. The priming is just for new wood or new concrete areas. So don't get too concerned about that. One little jug of this primer is enough primer for probably five or six bags of leveler, just so you know. You don't end up wasting your money buying a whole lot of product you don't need. Now, you want to make sure that this stuff is dry before you add your floor leveler. That takes about uh, half an hour to an hour and 20 minutes if you use a fan. Okay, you're allowed to speed up the process. It's just a water-based product and so if you add a fan to it, that'll get you in business in no time. There we go. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, next up. All right, so the instructions for mixing your floor level are here. Follow it if you feel like it. Ah, I've been mixing this stuff for so many years. I know what it looks like when it's done. So we're gonna do a half bag at a time, which is about two and a half liters of water, which is about 0.5 to 0.6 gallons. All right, there we go. I need more water, I can tell already. Now, the pails from Home Depot are not big enough to mix a whole bag. But, if you go to a flooring supply place, they give you just a little bit bigger of a pail, and you'll be able to get it all done in one shot. Now, I like using a slow mixer for this kind of product. It takes a lot of torque. Nice and easy, until those products are mixed together. It's just a sloppy mess, right? Primarily, you're mixing sand into water here, all right? So let's see what it looks like. Yeah, that's, that's pretty all right. It is self-leveling, so it's gonna be somewhat fluid. All right? Okay, now what I do is I generally like to pour it out layers like this, okay? We'll leave the pail there for a minute. 
let it all run out. Floor leveler, you'll see there's a ridge here. Although it flows, it's not perfect. So you can actually use a trowel to smooth it out. You can help to manipulate it a little bit. When it's done, you can also sand it. So if you need it to be really smooth, you can accomplish that task, no problem. Mix the rest of that bag. There we go. Let me see. Uh, about there. Ah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this last batch, I made a little thinner on purpose. Then we're gonna just tie all the old together with the new. This batch I made a little thinner. Oh, -ho. did we ever. Probably wouldn't have killed if I mixed it another 30 seconds in. But you can just mix it up right here on the floor. Look at that. So that's the advantage of the last bag you roll. Make it nice and thin. And then it'll self-level right into perfection. And here we go. So now we're going to have a surface that's incredibly level for the rest of the island to be built out on so that nothing is going to look funky. And when I go to do all my finished carpentry and install my end gables and everything around the island, I'm going to be dealing with a flat level surface instead of scribing up and down all over the place. Last thing you need to know, uh, depending on how sensitive the installation is that you're doing, you can actually sand this finish. Okay. Boom. So you can take the ridges off around the edges and make it absolutely perfect. This sandpaper here is actually 150. I would recommend going with an 80 grit to do this application. But for the purpose of the video today, I just want to demonstrate it can be sanded. Now that's pretty much a level floor, which means I can finish all my carpentry, island installation, appliance installation, no more issues. Huh. Costs a few bucks, takes a little bit of time, but makes all the finishing installations so simple highly recommend leveling before you put in your flooring. Now, if you want to learn about how to install flooring, then click the video here. We got a series put together for hardwood, laminate, and vinyl. You're going to love it. We'll see you in the next video.